Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. Great show for you today. Jill Roberts and Letty Santiago from Community Partners in Caring are with me. This organization does great work for seniors in our community who may be isolated, also people with disabilities. It's a powerful story. It's inspiring. Stay tuned. The team from Community Partners in Caring on The Good Life next. Welcome to Good Life, I'm Dean Wilson. So glad you joined us today. Just a reminder, you can always find us at goodlifetelevision.org. Uh, all the interviews are there. There's also power clips, some of the kind of the special moments uh, that we've had, some, some great guests, and we have two more today. I'm really pleased to welcome uh, two directors of community outreach for an organization called Community Partners in Caring here in the Santa Barbara, Santa Maria area. Uh, Jill Roberts and Letty Santiago with me. Thank Welcome. you for having us. Thank you for having Thanks us. for coming. Um, just getting to talk to you guys a little bit before we started here. It's, uh, it's wonderful to hear what you do, and I want to kind of get into that in a minute in terms of this organization. Mm -hmm. But maybe we could start a little bit with kind of your own stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I was reading about both of you this morning, and, and uh, it was really interesting. Kind of, it was interesting to, to read kind of where you came from and kind of what has brought you to the place where you want to do this kind of work. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe Jill, we can start with you, but kind of just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you came from, and kind of what got you to, to this position. Um, I've lived most of my life in the Los Angeles area, but I've recently moved to uh, Santa Barbara County because my mother lives in Santa Maria, and I took this job with Community Partners in Caring um, because I feel a calling to um, be there uh, giving assistance to people who are isolated, uh, particularly seniors. And uh, I have a, a disability that I've lived with all my life, and um, yet I've worked in the working world uh, all my life. And uh, I do, I like to work, and I like to uh, support others, and I like to, um, I like to come up with new ways of finding solutions uh, to what uh, sometimes are the problems that people encounter, and they just don't know how to get past them. Um, and so this job um, that I'm doing as a community engagement specialist just uh, really called to me. And um, when I first met with Vilma Contreras, who's the executive director, um, you know, we really hit it off. Um, but behind all that was my being uh, someone who was brought up by um, young parents, very young. And I was uh, born prematurely, which is why I have a, a slight developmental disability. Uh, it's called cerebral palsy, and I just walk kind of differently uh, than you might expect seeing someone walking down the street. Um, but, um, you know, with support from other agencies like the Shriners and, um, you know, a lot of, lot of support from my parents, honestly, uh, always encouraging me to, you know, just get up and keep going. And uh, classmates, teachers, college uh, programs, have all been there as a support system for me, and so I've always felt that need to um, also be someone who gives their time and talent. Um, I was thinking about it the other day. I, at first I was gonna say, I think I first started helping seniors about 45 years ago, um, but I also realized that if you go even further back when I was about three, the first time I was ever freely giving my time and talent when I was when I was in preschool, and my mom got us to do a puppet show for my preschool class oh, really? and so I've always been a little bit of a performer and you know kind of uh, out there and and uh, uh, so it's been a, a long time that I've you know just wanted to be out there uh, both engaging and entertaining I love it <laughs> well I admire you a lot thank you uh, we have a our second daughter would be cerebral palsy uh, diagnosed uh -huh. she actually had a massive stroke in the womb Mm -hmm. So she would be, she's, it's a brain injury, but mm -hmm. she would be diagnosed as, as cerebral right. palsy. And so we've been in that world for 18 years. And to see people like you mm -hmm. who have that diagnosis, that injury right. overcome yeah. and work, you've had a great family. Yes. It's really spectacular. So kudos to you and, and everything you've done. It's yeah. wonderful. Letty, tell us about yourself. Okay, well, I'm not from the LA area. I was <laughs> born and raised in the Lompoc area, yeah. North County. 
Um, I basically have been doing um, work with the medical field my whole life until I started working with community partners in caring. My story's a little bit different. I started working with community partners in caring because seniors helped me at some point. Mm -hmm. I went through something in my life where I ended up in the hospital for about a year and a half. Really? And um, although my family members did come to visit me, it was hard. I was in UCLA. It was hard for them mm -hmm. to drive to UCLA. And the only people that would visit me were seniors, the volunteer seniors in the hospital. They would bring me communion. They would bring me magazines. They would keep me company. Wow. And that just, after I went through all that, um, this ad about this job came up and <laughs> it just, it was me. I, it was, there was no doubt about it that I needed to do this. I needed wow. to get back to my senior community. And that just, that's wow. where I'm at right now. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's talk about community partners and caring. I want to preface this by saying that the organization that sponsors this program is called the Turner Foundation, which has a long history, 45 years actually, of working with seniors. Um, and specifically, low-income seniors who tended to be isolated. Um, and the Turner Foundation had a model to bring services Mm -hmm. permanent supportive services programs to apartment communities where they lived to be able to enrich their lives and do all that sort of thing which is a wonderful story in itself what you guys do um, it, b best I can tell is you're going to them so you're 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 going to the seniors who might be isolated mobility limited mm -hmm. maybe no family and you're finding them and then bringing them support that they need. Is that accurate? And it's, and it's not just an intervention. It's not just a, an emergency, oh, right. you have one this one thing. need. Right. Yeah. I mean, at least for those that really need that. that you know, sometimes it's, especially with the pandemic, you know, maybe it is just a, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to get to the grocery store this one week. Yeah. But if we see that there's more that can be done, if more social services um, could happen for this person and uh, it's just the lack of someone being there to support them to help fill out the paperwork, you know, that's what we're moving toward is to be that all-inclusive um, support system that's there for them. Um, it's ongoing. Yes, and we haven't stopped during the pandemic um, everything I'm sure the need's greater in the pandemic. It, it people definitely not able is. To go out. You know the numbers, right? Yeah. It was, it was, we had less than 400 uh, seniors enrolled before the pandemic, and now we're probably reaching 900. Doubled. We've doubled since right? the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Just this year? Just this yes. year. Wow. So you have a need for volunteers? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And that's uh, what we do. <laughs> and you rally the volunteers. Yes. And that's why we're on TV right now. <laughs> we're talking to those people. Yes. Uh, so the three outcomes that I, I noticed this in some of the material is um, among the seniors you serve, you expect to find greater confidence as they age in place, reduced isolation, and improved access to basic needs, such as medical care, preventive care, food, and the need for human connection, which I think is mm -hmm. so powerful. Um, so for somebody who's watching this as an introduction to community partners and caring, those are the three outcomes you're trying to get. Yeah. So what's the path for somebody who's watching this who says, you know, I'd like to volunteer, I'd like to bring seniors groceries, I'd like to bring seniors, transport seniors, how, how do they do it? The, the positive thing that happened from having to pivot during the pandemic is that we had already brought on a staff or two that were, uh, they transformed the website. Uh, give kudos to Kaylee Wise, our program coordinator. And um, so the, the website was renewed. Um, you can go to our website, which is partnersincaring.org. And there's um, information about us. There's an application that you can fill out online. All the forms we, uh, you know, it used to be we would just have people We'd give them an application, they'd bring it back, we'd get other documents and a background check done. You know, that was all in person. We're not doing that at the moment, but everything has been transformed into electronic form, so we can email it to you, you email it back. That's you wonderful. Know, so that's, you know, one of those benefits that actually comes from all this hardship we've been through is that, you know, we're, we're just ramped up that much more right. <laughs> to do it uh, quickly Te and efficiently and technologically, yeah. Um, 
uh, I loved your answer, Letty, when you were asked why you work for part community partners in caring. And it was pretty senior. It was pretty simple. Because I will be a senior someday. Mm -hmm. And I would want someone to help me. Um, you experienced that in the hospital. Yes, sir. You had mm -hmm. people helping you. Mm -hmm. And what a simple but like profound thought. It is. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be seniors. Yes. And how do we want to be treated? Exactly. I mean, that's really the motivate. That's the driving motivation for you, isn't it? Right. Right. It's 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 hard for any young person to understand what a senior mm -hmm. goes through unless yeah. they actually go through what a senior goes through. I experienced that isolation, and I just think about all these seniors at home that have nobody. Yeah. All they need is one 30-minute phone call, and that's all we need volunteers to do. An easy phone call for yeah. a senior that has no one to talk to all day mm -hmm. but the TV. An easy grocery shopping that they can do, pick up some groceries and drop them off because they are not able to go to the store. Right. It's easy. We ask the seniors to volunteer an hour or two a month. Yeah. It's not that hard. The application is process is easy. We're keeping our volunteers and clients safe, um, even for our transportation. Before the pandemic, you know, we had a lot of services that we provided. Because of the pandemic, we had to transition and think, what are the seniors needing right now? Yeah, yeah they do need transportation, mm -hmm. but a lot of the doctors were doing the online appointment, so our seniors needed groceries, and that's where we came in. And that's what we need right now. Well, that can just go grocery shopping for our seniors. Easy task, easy. And young people, and I'm thinking about college students, mm -hmm. what a great opportunity to do something meaningful. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think that, uh, you know, I always think in terms of, when I think about service, uh, it's so much more than about what happens for the person being served. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something mm -hmm. so powerful that happens for that person who's serving. So for a young person, I'm thinking about as a parent, you know, what do I want for my kids? Well, I want them to have hearts mm -hmm. that are tender. I want them to care about other people. I want them to see people who are hurting or alone. And what an opportunity for young people, college students who are in good health, maybe have a car, are mobile, and they can go and make a real impact in seniors' lives, can't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that, that's a win-win. That's a good lesson that parents can be teaching their kids right now because we've all experienced what the isolation feels right. like. We didn't have that experience yeah. before. Yeah. We were right. blessed and uh, you know capable of going wherever we wanted, whenever we wanted, and now we've had you know eight nine months of not being right. able to. So when you think of that pullback and saying, well, we can't go visit grandma, but you can certainly call grandma. You can write her a letter. You can do something because you know what it feels like right. to suddenly be not able to be in contact mm -hmm. with your friends, you know. That's a great point. Yeah. We're all kind of like experts in isolation. We, now. <laughs> now. we know what it feels like, yeah. which is, a, that's a very good point. Last thing I wanted to ask about, seniors in general, I mean, I, I sometimes I feel like, and, and the Turner Foundation, I think, I, I kind of grew up around the Turner Foundation and the seniors that we worked with. And I, I think it was, I think I discovered this when I was young, but it's become even more true for me, which is these seniors are oftentimes like gold mines of life experience, mm -hmm. wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, I know Truth. that you told me that was her experience yeah, when definitely. she went in the hospital. That's yeah, what tell me realized. about that. I mean, I heard stories from years back. I mean, I learned new things from seniors, things I'm using now, yeah. even just like mm -hmm. some of them were tutors. I'm learning that stuff to work with my daughter. I mean, a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. Yeah. And I still have contact with these people at this time. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience. And yeah. Honoring our elders. It's such a good it's such a good thing for our community, and what we can glean, you know. I was interviewed. That, is, that is part of our message. Our mission is is to um, really allow seniors to live independently, but with the understanding that it has to be with dignity and yes. respect, yes. you know, and all the best things. Not you know, not just how a senior may think this is what I want, because sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes when you get isolated, you forget how to take care. 
Um, that was my experience with my dad. Unfortunately, he passed away last year. And um, I did everything I could in the year prior to his passing to try to find ways to have him not be as isolated. He kind of put himself in a, in a good setup, a way to, to live and, and you know, know that his expenses were all taken care of. But it was still very isolated. And um, that, I know, was the, the big push um, after he passed. I just felt like I should have, I could have done more. I felt like there needed to be more in the world so that the people who are caregiving right now realize that yes we know how hard it is to do that caregiving but with support with other people and with other organizations and as partners together we can do so much more to yes. make um, make the time that a senior has made for themselves you know better you know, enrich their life independent mm -hmm. isn't being alone independent is being able to achieve things and when you get old that means with support yes you don't have to do it all alone yes. and isolation is never good no. <laughs> I, I can't think of very many situations where uh, extended periods of isolation is a good thing for somebody we're not meant to live that way no. I, mean, I just don't mm -hmm. believe that um, so you've got 900 people signed up so if an organization group of people, family, wanted to do some something for one of those 900 or 10 mm -hmm. or 50 or whatever it would be, bake cookies, <laughs> call them, send a card. We're definitely, could they do that? Yeah, we're definitely pushing, um, but within the next two weeks, we want to try to gather cards. We do want to try to get uh, around Christmas time, get things out to seniors that you know may, maybe haven't received we don't know, you know, if they've received things, and so we want to make sure that they know the community cares about them. Yes. Uh, we're going to institute something called Phone Pals. Mm -hmm. uh, we already do what we call reassurance calls, which is just to make sure those that are signed up with us know and remember about our services and that they can always call. Um, the call center number is 805-925-8000. Um, that's where Letty is, that's where Jennifer and Michael, Leah, <laughs> we, staff, the call we, we, have, we have a staff there and um, they're usually there nine to five and uh, I think you can even leave a message if it's <laughs> after that time. And, and so, so somebody can contact you guys mm -hmm. and you could help connect them to seniors right. mm -hmm. to who, who they may want to bless. Mm -hmm. Is that that's possible? Right. Yes. That's really good to know. And for our expansion in Santa Barbara we really need more uh, funding support. So if there's anyone out there who um, feels moved to give, uh, you know, Giving Back Tuesday is coming up right. uh, following Thanksgiving, and um, you may see us on social media, you know, saying a few things about that. Yeah. And um, I'd really like to thank the Organic Soup Kitchen, the Food Bank of Santa Barbara, and even the Mesa branch, the new branch of Montecito Trust and uh, Montecito Bank and Trust. Yeah. Uh, they're going to let me put a donation box uh, in their lobby, um, yeah. just so we have some extra things to be able to supply seniors uh, as we move into December. Yeah, this is really important around the holidays. And I know the last thing I wanted to mention is there is a program that a few years ago, and I think it was mostly up in the Santa Maria area, the Break the Barrier. Mm -hmm. So Break the Barrier was a program where students got involved with mm -hmm. you all. Is that right? Right. Yeah. And which was a transformative thing uh, for, the, again, probably for the young people just as, as much as it was for the seniors, but it was centered around doing landscaping mm -hmm. and kind of changing the environment for a, for a situation that was in need. Um, and the second part of it was technology training. Teaching right. a little, you know, how to use your phone. <laughs> yeah, so we great, using, I need that. Yeah, we were using high school students to do all this. The high school students would sign up as volunteers and go out to the seniors' home this was awesome. I was actually witness to uh, the, yard, the yard work and the IT program. Our seniors loved it to see all these young people mm -hmm. in their yard yeah. doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. As well as with the IT, we were able to teach them how to Skype back what, a year ago yeah. of Skype yeah. to them, Zoom, all this new stuff that they didn't know about. These, these high, and the high school students loved it. They enjoyed doing it with yeah. us. So. so high school students, college students, mm -hmm. any students, any student. you guys want to bring this Break the Barrier program with, with young people right. to the Santa Barbara area as well. So yeah, that's something where you need. Yeah, I hope after the need, pandemic after restrictions, the pandemic. you know, yeah. that we can build that as well. That's, that's wonderful. 
Well, this is amazing, you guys. Great work. Thank you for what you do. Partnersincaring.org. Yes. Let me see if I remember that phone number you just gave. 805 eight two eight nine two five nine two five eight thousand. There you go. <laughs> nine two five eight thousand. It's wonderful, and I really hope people see this and get involved because you know what you're doing with seniors is so wonderful. So thanks for coming on. Thank you for having. Thank me. you, Dean. We'll see you next time.